Barrel length is a discussion that pops up a lot. Uh, there's a lot of opinions on it, and I've used everything from a 12 and a half up to a 16 inch in the tackle games. So uh, this is kind of the reasons why I've landed where I'm where I'm at and how I got there. And I'm gonna go over the different advantages and disadvantages of everything because what's good for me may not be great for someone else so you can kind of decide on your on by yourself what which direction you'd like to go with your barrel um first i'll start with the shortest one and we'll work our way up to 16 inches so this is a i believe it's a 10.3 inch uh, ballistic advantage and i never competed with this one i got it with intentions to to compete with it um, however, I didn't really like the velocity that it was getting. Um, with the 60, 69 grain uh, Sierra Match King load that I make, or that I hand load, I was getting about 2,520 feet per second with the 69 grain load, and with the 55 grain load, I was getting 2,653 feet per second. So for me, I decided that the amount of drop and the amount that the wind was going to start affecting the bullet even at 100 yards uh, wasn't acceptable so I ended up putting a suppressor and a light on the gun and with the Vortex Huey I can shoot stuff with my night vision uh, through using the night vision setting of the Huey that's what this gun's for now. Uh, still a fun gun I like it I you know I'm gonna use it for other things now. Uh, the 12 and a half inch gun, uh, I use this gun in Utah and we shot out to 380 yards or so in Utah. I did really well on the longer range stages with it. So the barrel length doesn't necessarily correlate to how you're gonna perform on longer range stages. Uh, it does mean that you have to be more cognizant of the amount of wind, uh, the wind direction, the value of the wind and you have to know um, your chronograph data, how fast your bullet's going, and put all those things together to figure out what your holds are gonna be, which is really where the one to 10 with the um, reticle that has uh, dots for windage and stuff out in the reticle, that's where that comes into play and really helps out. The 12 and a half was getting 2,751 feet per second with the American, I think it's, uh, Federal American Eagle 55 grain and that was fast enough for me I was I was happy with that and I was getting very good accuracy with my 69 grain load and I think it was in the mid 2600s so I got about another hundred feet per second out of my 69 grain load going from the 10 and a half to the 12 and a half or 12.3 I can't remember what this one is um, the things that I did not like about this gun is the angle between uh let's see if i have a little lower i'll just use this one the angle between the bottom of the magazine and the handguard um is kind of a little bit prohibitive when you come to things like culverts uh in utah we had to shoot off of a, a wire spool a wooden wire spool and to put your magazine to brace on your magazine and your handguard would have meant that the radius of the uh, <clears throat> wire spool would have gone above my barrel. So I couldn't get to a point where I could use those two points of contact. So I ended up having to take a little bit of a compromised shooting position. Um, and I probably missed once or twice more than I should have had I had a longer handguard uh, than the 12 and a half. And then when I was testing the events for the uh, ETTS where I was a match director I was using the 12 and a half inch gun which has the same length handguard as the 10 and a half inch gun and I ran into the same problem on a covert culvert where the bottom of the mag put it to where my barrel was going to be resting on the metal car culvert so I actually had to lean over the cul culvert and hook the mag to the other side of it to get a decent shooting position so um, you run into issues there however the positives of it is it's much more manageable when you're slinging and unslinging it and the other thing is when you put it on your back uh, muzzle down this guy isn't going to touch your leg and burn it i wear shorts um, when i compete 
So uh, this guy will hit the back of the knee every now and then, and when it's hot, that doesn't feel very good. The 13.8 uh, ballistic advantage is probably where I'm going to end up staying. Um, it is getting 20, 113 feet per second. So I picked up about 75 feet per second over the 12 and a half inch, which the faster the bullet's going, as long as it's accurate, the better, because the wind will not be affecting it near as much. And if you have a small target at 100 yards and the wind's blowing 10 miles an hour, it can blow you off that target, especially, you know, the amount of forgiveness that you have between a 13.8 and a 10 is quite a bit. Um, and especially if it's variable winds, I'm not really going to get into it, but if the if it's variable winds, uh, the, um, the amount of difference that a variable, variable wind will make over a 13.8 and a 10.5 is quite a bit. It's three or four inches. So not at 100 yards, but like 200 yards. So you, have, you always have to keep that in mind. The other thing that I like is this is a longer handguard. So that same angle from the bottom of the mag to your handguard is quite a bit longer. That way um, you can use, you know, when you're using things like wire spools and culverts, you're gonna be able to get a much better shooting position and you won't have to use a more compromised shooting position. So somewhere between, I believe that if you're gonna, if you have to pick somewhere between these two, the 12 and a half and the 13.8 is where you're gonna to wanna to end up uh, landing. I used a 14 and a half inch for just for all of 2021. Um, I did very well with it and I liked it. The one thing that I did not like is when I slung it muzzle down on my back uh, after shooting, the muzzle device was really hot and would burn the back of my leg and I did not like that. It, it hurt pretty bad. Um, so like I said, I wear shorts. I, I don't wear pants. It's too hot for that stuff. So um, this guy will burn the crap out of you. And just a warning, there are a lot of people that will show up with suppressors and these get extremely hot and uh, I think Sean uh, had a pretty good, he called it the devil's popsicle because it burnt the crap out of everything and uh, I've seen a lot of people with blisters um, after using these guys. The 14 and a half inch barrel I may have gone over but this is 2872 feet per second with the 55 grain um, which picks up another 60 or so feet per second off the uh, 13.8 so the velocity is starting to get really good here um, I actually competed in a three gun match with this gun in limited without the 3x and um, it was a very long range heavy match and I did very well at the match so this is a very capable length of barrel you just have to be cognizant of the the length is starting to get out there to where it can start burning your leg and stuff I don't have it because I borrowed the 16 and a half inch gun the first couple times I competed because all my other guns had big muzzle brakes on them um, and variable part power optics that I didn't want to take off and back then you had to use a one power optic and the 16 inch gun was great it was a little unwieldy it was a little long for um, how I wanted it but it was fine um, you could even use an 18 or 20 inch barrel and it'll be great just be cognizant of you know, when you go to sling it with muzzle down, it's going to be, you know, the back of your knee to your calf um, and could possibly burn you. And it gets a little unwieldy sometimes. Um, the other thing about these guns that you have to take into account is everybody gets caught up in the velocities and what the bullet's going to be doing is the amount of weight that you have on the forward part of your gun when you're shooting. So. When you're breathing hard and you've been lifting weights, you start getting shakes. And uh, when you have more weight on the end, it is easier to shoot off-handed. And even when you're braced or prone, uh, the heavier your gun, the more steady it's gonna feel and be. So I did feel a little bit more wobble um, in the reticle and I did see a lot more, uh, or a little bit more wobble in the reticle when I was using the lighter guns. Um, that is one reason why I pushed my scope forward a little bit uh, to get a little bit more weight further forward on the gun. Um, the head position thing's never been a, it's never bothered me, so I don't really think about it. Uh, I can find the eye box really easy. So that's why I pushed it forward just a little bit more. Um, these, these two guns, uh, I do like um, the balance of them and that there's a little bit more weight further down on the barrel. 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to using a heavy profile barrel um, or a barrel that is too pencil, like a pen, the pencil barrels. Uh, that's, I don't think there's enough weight out on the end of the gun and it, you can start shaking a lot more and you're gonna sacrifice a lot with offhand shooting, you know, out to 7,500 yards, you'll start sacrificing a lot if you can't hold the gun steady. So I wouldn't go too light uh, with it. So that is where I've been with the shortest to longest gun that I've used. So from 12 and a half to 16 and a half, um, I've won with the 16, the 14 and a half, and the 12 and a half. So you can definitely make it work for, for anything. So if you have a 16 and a half inch gun, don't think that it's gonna be something that's gonna hold you back. Now, for you, it may end up being ideal. Like a lot of people like using it because you get it, you know, you don't have as much regulation around having to use pistol braces on your AR and all that other stuff with the shorter barrel guns. But, uh, you know, you're, you're, gonna, you're not gonna be at a disadvantage with a 16 competed against people that have a 12 and a half or a 13.8. They may have a little bit more easy of a time uh, slinging and unslinging guns and working the VTAC barrier, stuff like that, but you're not gonna be at a disadvantage. Um, it'll be just fine. So if you have any questions or you want me to go in depth more about any aspect of that, just drop the questions in the comments. And if there's enough about a certain topic, I'll talk about it. Other than that, I appreciate it. And let me know if you have any more